Welcome to another edition of TPM's 4-Minute Fridays. My name is Bruce Harris and I'm a Senior Application Engineer here at TPM. Today we're going to be working with an embedded schedule in Revit and we're going to use this schedule to ensure that the design intent for our supply airflow is met. So with that said, let's flip over to Revit. Now that we're over in Revit, before I make the schedule, I want to point, a point out a couple of things about the space object. So I'm going to click on one of the space objects. The first thing I wanted to point out is this calculated supply airflow. Now this is coming from whatever analysis package you're using to uh, compute your heating and cooling loads. Now you could be using the the uh, analysis package that comes inside Revit or some external package. Now if you're using an external package in order for that calculated supply airflow to be filled in you would have to bring that calculated supply airflow back into Revit using GBXMLN. Now we also have a value right above it called the specified airflow. Now the specified airflow is the same as the calculated airflow, but it is an editable field. Now the reason they do that is so you can come back in here and let's say your firm's practice is to round up to the nearest 25 CFM. You could round up each of these numbers to a nice even number. It also can be used for a package uh, an analysis package that does not allow you to GBXML back in so you could just create a schedule that has the room number and name and the specified airflow and from your output from your analysis package just fill in the specified airflow that you want each room to have. Now the other piece of information I want to point out in here while we're in here is the condition type. So this lets me know if it's uh, a room that's heated and cooled or if it's an unconditioned space. So with that said, let's go ahead and make our schedule. So I'm going to switch over to my browser, right click on schedules and quantities, do a new schedule and quantity, now the object that we're going to do is the space object. So I go down here and find spaces and I want it to be air flow schedule. So I've got my air flow schedule. Now these are the things it knows, so the data fields it knows about the space. We're going to start off with the number then the name, then I'm going to find that condition type, then we're going to find the um, actual, excuse me, actual airflow, so the actual supply airflow, and then we're going to find the specified supply airflow. Now those are the pieces of data that I need out of the space, but I also want to create one calculated field. So I'm going to click on add a calculated parameter. And I'm going to call this one difference. Now it's based on an HVAC value and that value is airflow. And the formula I want to be is actual airflow minus supplied airflow. And go OK. And let's sort it by number. And then one more OK. So this is our initial schedule that we're going to add an embedded schedule to. So this is our initial schedule. Let me spread out some of these columns so we can see a little bit better. Alright, so 
This is our initial schedule with the um, objects or the information that we want out of the space object. Now the rest of the information is going to come out of a different object. It's going to come out of our diffuser or air terminal. So I'm going to go to properties, excuse me, and then go to fields and go to embedded schedule. I'm going to turn on an embedded schedule. Air terminals is what we want to make an embedded schedule of and now I'm going to click on embed schedule properties. This lets me pick the fields that are in the air terminal for my embedded schedule. Now in the air terminal I'm going to start off with the type mark and then I'm going to go the type Then I'm going to go with the flow. And let's see what we have right now. Okay. So now, every time we have a room, it first off lists the space itself, what its actual what it's specified, and what the difference is. Um, then it lists each diffuser, what kind of diffuser it is, what its values are, and um, the actual here is a total of these right here. So like I was saying earlier, Sometimes people come in and round up specified airflow. So let's say we round ours from the calculated 505 up to, say, 525. So now we're within 25 CFM. Okay, so we have 25 CFM more than we actually need. So I can come in here and change one of my diffusers to be 125 instead of 150 and now I hit this exactly. Now it would be easier if I had something that would point out when I had an issue here. So what I'm going to do is come back in here and go into formatting. And I'm going to format a couple of different things. The first thing I'm going to format is actual supply airflow and I'm going to do a conditional format for it and I'm going to say if it's equal to zero then I want to give it kind of a a reddish color so let me pick a color over here and pick kind of a reddish background for it. Now I also want to do the same thing for difference except I'm, I'm going, to, going to make my uh, my condition a little bit diff different. Instead of um, a specific value, I'm going to say it's not between negative 25 and 25 CFM. And we're going to make that background color a similar color. And OK, and OK, and OK. So now, if my actual air supply is set to zero, I've got a red in there for me to know that I potentially have a problem there. So here I can see right next to it it's an unconditioned space so zero is okay. Now further down my list I have some heated and cooled areas that are at zero CFM so I know I have a, a, a problem there and I need to, to work on that problem. Now as I come down my uh, my different rooms here. I can click on it and see what my uh, specified airflow is. Change it to whatever I want. 525 is fine for that. And I'll round that one up to 550, etc. And then I could come in and adjust so I know that uh, right now I've got more than I need, so I've got three of them that need to go down to, um, say, 125.
So now you can see that I've got that exactly balanced in that room. So it's no longer a color over here. Um, could pick a couple of them that I want to be less. Uh, I wanted this one to be 125. So now I've balanced this. And you can continue to do that with your rooms and balance them. Not only can I change the CFM, but if I needed to, if I went up to, a, say, I had to go up to 250 CFM in one of my spaces, I could go in here and I could also change the neck. So I'm going to go up to 8 inch neck on these two ones in this room that are 150. Now notice their type mark went away, so they're no longer a type A diffuser. Let's say I want that to be a type B diffuser is my 8 inch neck. So when I put that in there and say yes, then it populates all the 8 inch necks with a type B. So not only can I change the CFM within a schedule, but I can also change the actual neck size or the family member within a schedule as well. So I can do many, many things to balance this off. Now I'm going to click on 502 and say highlight and model and have it flip over to this room. And you can see this is the room we just made the change to. So now this is an 8 inch neck and this one is an 8 inch neck and the other two are still our 6 inch neck. This has been an explanation of how to have an embedded schedule in Revit that you can use to make sure that you're meeting your design parameters. This has been another presentation in the series of 4-Minute Fridays from TPM. My name is Bruce Harris and I want to thank you for joining us and invite you to come back and watch again. Thank you.